Is it recording? Okay, good. Okay, and hey, don't don't lick yourself on on the internet, there, buddy. Okay. That's all right. I, I wasn't filming him. I'm actually filming what's coming up. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to ask you to do today is I'm going to ask you guys to um, just come on up, kind of so leave, it, leave the camera can, um, can see what's going on. If you just come on up, you can stand around, you can sit on the floor around here, whatever. Um, but um, today we're going to get into some three-dimensional shapes. Okay? Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the white balance down on this a little bit. Okay. So, here's the thing. Can you see me? Okay, on my big belly. Stop it. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Okay. So, by the end of this class, I want you to have memorized the formula for every single figure here or area. That's all right. Okay. Okay. Um, for area and volume. Every single one of these. Area and volume. Okay. So I guess what I'd like, like to do is I need the help. Hey. Hey. Um, hey. You can take this fuzzy thing. You're distracting me. I don't like that. Okay. So what I want you guys to do, because actually here, here's my goal. I don't know about you guys, but memorizing all the formulas for volume and area, that sounds kind of like a sucky little task. Agree? Okay. So are you just trying to sort? Are you just, is that what you're doing? Okay. Let's, 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 here. Let's not have you sort. Okay. So what, I'm, what I want you guys to do is I want you to sort this into some categories where they're all the same, where the formula might be the same, okay? So, um, so what I want you guys to do is I'm going to step out of here, we're going to step out of here, and I want you to, to um, separate all these into categories that have something have something similar enough that their formulas are going to be the same. <laughs> what do you got here there? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Okay, so, here's what I want you to do. Separate it in different categories for the formula might be the same. Come on. Come on, we're going to go get a leash. Okay. Go ahead. Do your job. So, you can help each other out, but... Sort them into the categories where they're similar. Similar things. Well, I sign some shapes. Yeah, let's 
kind of out of the way of the camera so even the people in the back can kind of see how we're sorting these things out. Okay? Yes. So you're pretty satisfied with what you got so far? Okay. Okay, let me see what we got. So you're sitting okay. So you're saying that all of these are the same. Okay? Um, I agree. All of those are the same. It doesn't matter if it's a triangular base or a parallelogram is a base, all of these things are formed the same way. Okay? But I'm going to argue something else. I'm going to argue that all of these fit into that category as well. Okay? And I'm going to argue that all of these fit into the same category too. Now you might be thinking, hey, there's circles, there's some that are squares, there's some that are triangles, but it doesn't matter, okay? And I can't see what I'm filming here. Did, can you plug that back in? Did, did, it, did it kind of come loose or something? Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Is it still filming? It is. Okay. So what I'm saying is all of these things here can be formed, and, and this, and this, and this, and these, can all be formed with the same process. What is that process? That process is start with your base and just go and you stretch it up. Okay? Here, th this one, this one actually is a little different. Um, this one here, even though it's a square base, you start and go and stretch it up. Okay? On this shape right here, actually, actually I'll tell you what. Um, why don't you guys go ahead and have a seat so people in the back can see because kind of how I developed this is fairly important. Justin, you, you can take it back to your desk. Okay. So, um, every single one of these things can be formed using the exact same process by taking a figure and then just stretching it up. You might think, how, oh. you might think, how can I do it with like something like this? Well, I can do this a couple different ways. I can start with my parallelogram on the bottom and then go stretch it up. Or I can actually start with a square on the bottom and go stretch it to the side. Okay? But take a look at this. Even something like this, if I cut it on the bottom, I get a square. If I cut it halfway through, what do I get? A square. Cut it right here, what do I get? A square. Cut it right, I get a square the whole way through. This thing here that I've already shown you, the bottom. The bottom is a hexagon, so what kind of hexagon? Well, just this shape right here. It's a regular hexagon, okay? Um, okay, um, anyway. So, so this thing here, I got a hexagon, I stretch it up, and it, think about it, if I cut it, what do I get? Hexagon, 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 the whole way through. If I take this, could I have this be my base? And then stretch that up to get this figure? No, I can't. So on your formula last night, when it said P, that was the perimeter of my base. It's very important you guys understand when they say base, what that means. That means the shape that I could take and go and get that figure. This right here, technically, it's a triangular, it's a right triangular prism. So my base is a triangle, and then as I go up, I'm going at a right angle, so that it is a right triangular prism. And think about it, if I cut it, triangle, 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 okay? You're like, hey, wait a minute, how is this the same? It's the same thing. We start with a circle and we go and stretch it up. Okay? And it's circle, 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 circle. Okay? I kind of I look at this personally as a stack of coins. Okay? Um, if I was going to um, take a look at this, it'd be a stack of triangles. 
Okay. Now if I look at this, that wouldn't be a stack of anything looking the same shape. It'd be like a rectangle and then a smaller rectangle and a smaller rectangle and a smaller rectangle. Okay. That's why all of these things are the same. Even something like this. Could this be my base? No. I've got to have the shape that I can go and get that. Okay? This is another triangular prism. Okay? So, I mean, all of these are formed the same way. And remind me, what is this again? Where did it come from? And that's not high school baton. It's, this is, these are the rebar that go in, the, in when they're pouring concrete. There's a bit, there used to be a big old stack of them up by Fields Place um, in, the, uh, in the ditch there. This um, is when they go ahead and cut out concrete and replace it with concrete, they put um, rebar back in. So now, so all of these things that you can't see anymore, those are all the same thing. Now these right here, can't really see them very well. All these pyramids, they're all the same. Why? Because they all come to a point. This one has a square, and as I go and cut it up, I keep getting squares. Now my squares get smaller. That's a pyramid, okay? If I do this, I get a circle, but as I stretch it up, I get circles, but they're smaller and smaller circles, okay? So there's a couple things you need to know. On a pyramid, this side right here, this length, that's called my slant height. That's the height of my face. That's the height of the, of the flat surface. Now if I talk about the height of the pyramid itself, that goes into the middle. It goes into the, from the very tip to the middle of the bottom. So there's two things. There's a height, which goes from here to here, and there's a slant height, which goes from here to here. This has a slant height as well, because I've got my height, which goes from the base to the tip, and then I've got a slant height which runs along the edge. Slant height is always at a slant, okay? And slant height, we will use a L for slant height, okay? The only thing we really not, uh, even this one, even though it's got a triangular base to it, it's still a pyramid. It's a triangular pyramid, okay? Or this one here would be a, tri uh, a, um, a square pyramid, okay? The only thing we haven't covered so far, spheres. Okay. So now you might you might think, wait a minute, the book has a couple different formulas for this and this. Now why do they have different formulas? What does this have in it that the other one doesn't? Since it's a, since it's a circle, what, what constant does it have in it? Pi. It has pi in it where this one doesn't. But the theory is the same. It's still built the same way, okay? So what I want you to be able to do today is use formulas. You can let them go. Use formulas, and we're gonna work on memorizing these later. Right now, you will be able to look at the formulas. Okay, where am I at here? He can chew on one of those. Has he got the half sphere again? <laughs> What's he got? A cylinder? Okay, so so I, I kind of want you to just have a, 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 a um, an idea of where those formulas might come from. So we're just going to explain some of them here real quick, and then we'll talk about maybe the one through four you did last night. Oh goodness sakes! Three-dimensional figures. Okay. Let me just go over the, bless you, the, uh, a couple definitions here while I've got my book open. 
Um, so again, there's some different different um, terms that we probably need to make sure you got down. A polyhedron, a polyhedron is kind of like a polygon. A polygon is made of straight segments. A polyhedron is made up of flat sides. No curved sides. Um, well, I shouldn't say no curved sides. Yes? Okay, thank you. Okay. Solid, all flat surfaces of closed simple region call a polyhedron. A face is the flat surface. An edge, an edge is this is where they come together. So if I would extend the edge out, it would make a line. So an edge is a segment. A vertex is just the point where they all come together. If I was going to give this three-dimensional shape a name, what do you think we would call it? What shape is my base? No, my shape, my base can't be a rectangle because I don't see a rectangle that I can stretch and make that whole thing. Trapezoid. It's trapezoid. Because the thing is I can't make it a rectangle because if I stretch this rectangle down, it doesn't stay the same shape. It doesn't stay the same size. The only time we're allowed to do that is, in a, pyra is a pyramid or a cone. So this trapezoid, I'm actually stretching it back and I'm making a prism. So that is a trapezoidal prism okay if you want a better definition of prism that's where um, naughty geometry shapes get sent to okay they get sent to prism okay a prism is a polyhedral with two parallel congruent surfaces two parallel congruent sur faces Okay, that's, that's a good definition. I'm not gonna necessarily gonna ask you to, def uh, to define a, a, um, a prism. I just want you to be able to identify a prism. So the top and bottom are congruent. So whatever you start with, that's what you finish with and they're always parallel to each other. Okay, so that's my basis. Is my base always on the bottom? No, this one. Is my base always on the bottom? No, my base has to be what shape gets stretched through space. <clears throat> it kind of tickles when I do that. A pyramid, a pyramid is a polyhedron with a polygonal base and three or more triangular faces that meet at a common vertex. Okay, not polyhedrons, cylinders. But notice the same thing, my bases are the same and they're parallel to each other. A cone, kind of like a pyramid, in the, in the sense that they comes to a point, but there's no triangular faces anymore. Okay, and they have a sphere. Okay, so um, here's names of things: triangular prism, okay, um, rectangular prism, pentagonal prism, triangular pyramid, rectangular pyramid, pentagonal pyramid. There's all different sorts of things that we can name using different um, shapes. Okay, so formulas. Okay, now the formulas. I, I, I'm not going to get too crazy with these formulas. And, and like I said, for right now, I will give you these formulas. But let's take a look at them. See how they might be the same. Okay. Hmm. Take a look at a prism and a cylinder. Okay. P, what did I say P stands for? Perimeter of what? The base. Okay. Perimeter times height. Now, this is something that I don't want to get too deep into this right now, but 2 pi r, let me know what 2 pi r is. That's the circumference. That's my perimeter of the base. It's the same formula, just one they wrote out in terms of pi. Perimeter of the base, distance around the bottom. 2 pi r, 
that's circumference, distance around the bottom. Times my height, times my height. They're both the same. Okay? <laughs> twice the area of the base, twice, what's pi r squared? What's pi r squared? The area of a circle. Twice area of a circle. So believe it or not, these two formulas are the same. One's just more specific than the other. This one, area of the base times the height, same thing here, area of the base times the height. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Okay, regular pyramid and cone, you see some similarities here, here too. One third, area of the base times height, one third, area of the base times height. This one, one half PL, what does L mean again? Length, oh, it's a slant height. L is a slant height. We'll do an example of that real quick before we leave. And then pi r l plus the area of the base. Okay? Sphere, 4 pi r squared, 4 thirds pi r cubed. We're a little short on time, so I'm going to go ahead and just pound one of these out real quick. Okay? Two of them. Okay? So let's go at um, We'll work on drawing these things a little bit next week. What's the name of that shape? Triangular prism. Okay. I'm just going to give you some sides here. 10, 10, 8, and I know this may not be technically right, but let's make this Good morning, everybody. 7. Okay. Okay. The perimeter of my base times my height plus twice the area of my base. Let's do this part by part. What shape is my base? Triangle. It's got to be a triangle because that's the shape that I grab and go <laughs> stretch it out to get your whole shape. Okay. What's the perimeter of this triangle? 28. Because if I walk around my base all that distance, I get 28. Okay. What's my height of my prism? It's actually 20. Because you've got to imagine that if I did stand it up on its base, how far did I <coughs> it? Okay. So technically the height of a prism is the distance between the parallel bases. So I've got times 20 plus twice the area of the base. Well, this is, you know, there's a lot of different places to make mistakes here, so this is why we're going over an example. I'll probably go over um, another one um, on Monday. So the area of the base. Area of the base is a triangle. So the area of that base is one half base height. What's the base of my triangle? The base of my triangle. It's eight. Because here, I'm worried about just my base only. So forget about the rest of it, and we're just worried about my base only. So one half, my base of the triangle is eight. What's my height of the triangle? Seven, and then we just go ahead and simplify. 28 times 20 gives me 560, plus two in this one half. I don't know about you, but I'm just gonna cancel those so I don't have to do too much calculation. I get 56. And I get um, 616 square units. Okay. Volume. Let's do volume of this real quick. Is the area of the base times my height. The area of the base. I'm running out of time. One half, eight times seven. What's the height of my prism? What's the height of my prism? 20. 
because it's going from base to base. 560 cubic units, okay? So that's, you know, the prisms are gonna be kind of a tough one, especially if it's triangular. So I'm gonna ask you to try a couple of these this weekend. I'm not gonna give you a bunch because we don't have time and we need to go over some more examples, okay? So what I'd like to do is I would like to go page 71 Let's go 18, 21, 23, 23 and I'll throw in 22 as well. Okay, I think we're forced to leave here at 16, right? Okay, that's all we have time for.